So good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, to all of you. Um, thanks for listening. So um, I'm happy that uh, Christian invited me again to uh, present here in the webinar. And I basically um, uh, collected um, lots of material which all fall into one big category. And um, this is our endeavor to actually try to develop um, web-based services um, related to um, structure-based life science research. And with structure-based, I obviously mean protein structure-based life science research. So in the next 40 minutes, I will uh, go with you through this uh, services. Um, so this is work which is ongoing for, I don't know, probably eight years now. And uh, you will uh, see lots of references because behind these web-based services, uh, we put a lot of tools we developed over the last um, decade. Okay, so let's, um, let's start. Um, uh, okay, so um, so this is um, actually the front end of our web service. It's, uh, the name is Proteins Plus, and this is actually also the uh, the domain name uh, you can basically uh, see over here. And um, to give you the first two references, if you just want to get um, an overview of what we have done in the past for these web services, here are two publications in the web server issue of nucleic acid research, one from 2017 and one which came out just recently, uh, where we just summarize what the service is actually um, doing. So um, this Proteins Plus servers is uh, part of the German network for bioinformatics infrastructure. So this is a, um, a kind of a funding possibility for us uh, where we actually get a little bit of money um, to provide a service which is hopefully useful for people in the life sciences. Okay, so um, what was the rationale for um, starting this, this service? Uh, so um, the, the classical approach uh, when you work with protein structures is uh, by uh, monolithic uh, modeling packages which run on your computers. And while this is a very um, well set up scenario for people in industry, for people in academia, this is usually a very big hurdle. So the software, is um, probably very expensive even for academics and then you even if you want to use it only occasionally if you want to use it for training etc you, you, you need to install the software you need to learn how to work with the software so the question occurred whether we can do something uh, especially for academics that they can make more work which is usually done in modeling environments also in the web uh, so that they can use it occasionally once they are stumbling about the problem when they start working with structures. So we have the protein data bank, which is our big resource uh, with all the protein structures which are publicly available. And um, if you are in a commercial setup, you certainly ha also have a lot of in-house structures. And although I motivated this work mostly with um, academics, um, it's of course also, I think, an, an interesting environment and an interesting idea to have a web-based service to work with structures for larger companies companies where they can just roll it out to lots of chemists um, and other people in the company so that it's not only limited to people in the modeling department um, to look at structures and work with structures. So and then um, uh, a little bit problems with my with my slides. Okay. Okay, so um, here are basically the um, the two major areas of work uh, we are looking at. So um, the first area of work is in selection. That basically means uh, you start with a lot of structures and you somehow have the task to select some structures for doing further work. Yeah, and there might be uh, various criteria by which you are actually actually searching for protein structures. And you will see uh, some approaches actually uh, in the meantime. Some, uh, some things are basically there uh, just by properties. So you maybe you want to you look for structures which are have druggable binding sites or you want to search by uh, simplistic features like resolution. Uh, you want to take electron density into account. But maybe you also have more complex questions like um, 
like having finding similar binding sites or and this is one focus point for for today actually or to to really look at geometric arrangements of uh, features in the binding site and the second big area is the preparation phase so um, you start with the protein structure and you probably know that it's very hard to start with the with just the raw pdb structure so there's a lot of things you might do before you actually can work with this protein structure so starting with uh, clarifying the idea where protons are so protonation tautomeric states um, locating active sites uh, thinking about the water network and so on so this is that's all to do with preparation uh, parts and and why do you want to do this uh, basically you start with structure from crystallography and then you want to work with it in a typically molecular design scenario so um, you basically have probably a target inspection you want to just look at the protein want to know what's uh, what's there about known about it uh, virtual screening de novo design all the applications which uh, might be relevant for you Okay, so um, this is actually how the server looks like. Uh, we wanted to keep it simple. You can type in a search team here and you basically search in the PDB. Um, you can also upload your files in here in case you just want to work with proteins you, um, um, uh, which are not available in the PDB. Um, we are actually using a lot of technology from the PDB. We, we don't want to invent the wheel again. So uh, for example, uh, we are using the RESTful service from the PDB for keyword search, which is really um, a great service uh, from them. So um, basically we haven't done this by our own. We don't have to. Uh, you can basically um, use this REST service from the PDB. You type in your keywords here, and then we have a specific front end, which looks like this here, where you get um, prepared already uh, pre-processed information from the PDB files, which match your query. So you can do text searches here, but you can also look for smiles. Uh, if you look for a certain small molecule substructure, um, you can look for other keywords. Yeah, here. And then uh, what we usually notice that that many people want to make a very quick um, selection by um, the, 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 re the resolution, so the quality of the file, or the date so that was the typical two um, things where you where you make your first decisions so we have the sliders here the, so you can basically adjust them and decide on which structures you actually want to look at there are more selection criteria here it looks like a, a little bit like a web shop so that it's easy for you to find the right pdb files um, to work with so then you can basically click on these and then you uh, actually can start uh, working with the protein structure so that's the main view of uh, Proteins Plus. Um, it basically has a 3D viewer here on the right side. And um, this is also not developed by us. Um, this is the NGL viewer, which is uh, developed by Alexander Rose. And he basically has done this uh, or, or made it more and more professional while he was in San Diego at the Supercomputer Center where he worked for the PDB. And this is also the the viewer which is um, which is on the PDB side. So it's an, an an open source viewer, and it's really a great viewer. And whenever you want to do something with uh, proteins on the web, I can only highly recommend to just take it and not try to do it by yourself. It's just a lot of work, and we are really grateful for having this available from the PDB. Okay, so in the middle part, you, you see um, 2D structures. This is already something which is pre-processed by us. So while we were actually loading these molecules, um, um, we were extracting molecules. And here you basically see ligands in a neutralized form, uh, which already have some information which is not uh, available in the PB file, like um, uh, the double bonds, um, so um, uh, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then on the right side, you see a lot of tools uh, you can actually work with. And that's probably the main thing uh, we want to do now. And we will go to a few of them. So um, probably the most um, well-known one and one of the earliest tools we developed is Protoss. And uh, so Protoss was a joint development with BioSolf IT over several years. And the main publication is uh, this here by Stefan Wietz uh, from 
2014. And Protos is a Protos uh, as a hydrogen assigner. So it uh, starts with the with the binding site uh, as it is uh, available in the in the in the PB file, and then it assigns hydrogens. And while it is doing this, it um, uh, clarifies the tautomeric forms of the ligands um, and the protonation states. It considers side chain flips in the active site, and it calculates all the hydrogen positions of flexible groups. Yeah, and here are some examples. And um, the one thing which is probably a little bit special about Protoss is that um, it really has um, a good uh, resolver for tautomeric forms in the binding site. So we can really look for the right tautomeric form, taking the interactions which can be made between the ligand and the protein into account. Okay, so I will not um, talk about Protoss in, uh, in, in length because it would take too much time, um, as I will not do for many of the other tools. So I really would like to invite you to have also a look at the papers if you really want to know more about uh, the quality. So all of our methods are statistically evaluated on large data collections so that you can really get an impression about the quality of uh, the work. This is very, very important to me as an academic group leader to really do this. And um, you can find all this data always in the publications. Okay, so um, I wanna go to a, a different topic which became uh, very important to us, um, which is called EDIA. And uh, EDIA is a method to calculate electron density support for individual atoms. So you probably know that uh, crystallographic structures, they are based on electron density. And um, obviously this electron density is not of the same quality at every position in space. So um, this will not happen. And uh, of course you get um, quality measures. Yeah, you have something like the resolution and more uh, specific um, uh, criteria for crystal structures like the RSCC, etc., which give you an idea of the quality. But all of these methods are more focused on the whole structure or molecular level. What we wanted to have is a measure which give you an idea about um, the electron density support for individual atoms. Yeah, And so what we want to do is we want to basically calculate a molecular structure like you've seen it here and we want to give the information how much support in electron density is for each individual atom to the modeler so that you basically know uh, how reliable individual atom positions are. Yeah? And here you basically see the electron density at, at the one sigma level and um, this is information many modelers usually don't look at, you basically should, yeah? um, but it's always hard to get this information and to, to look at, at it at the same time with the structure. So here's a way to basically get a color code um, which um, shows you which atoms are basically not well resolved in the crystallographic structure. And there might be just very good reasons for this. Typically, you might have some flexibility in this region so that you can't see it. And from the modeling perspective, this is an extremely important information, uh, which parts are really have a high rigidity and are very well resolved in the crystal structures and which parts are not. Okay, so um, just an idea, just to give you an idea how this works. Uh, so you have the crystallographic data usually on a grid. Um, we have an oversampling technique, so you basically extrapolate uh, more information here on a higher resolution. Uh, we have a certain weighting function, uh, which is a piecewise linear potential, which actually um, scores positively if you have density in the range of the atom center as a close to the to the midpoint of the atom location and which uh, penalizes um, electron density here um, which is um, in uh, the surrounding of the atom yeah so this would usually not work because um, atoms are not um, individual atoms in the structure they are part of molecules um, so you basically have a covalent structure and the uh, the, the most important part of EDIA is that we have an ownership assignment. So every grid point is assigned to atoms. And if we have a covalent structure like here, we have certain uh, methods uh, available which assigns 
um, um, electron density portions which are located at grid points to individual atoms and with this we are actually able to really describe um, uh, 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 an electron density uh, which is um, which is located and um, and associated with a single atom and this gives us the the color coding you have seen yeah and oh, oh um, sorry for that uh, Okay. All right, so here are um, um, three examples, um, um, three ligand molecules and uh, with their electron density, just to show you the, the relevance of this work. So um, uh, we basically have, um, we basically have a different resolution here. So this is a very high, re highly resolved crystal structure and you basically see what you would expect. So clear signal for every atom. Here you basically see two cases where we have um, lower, um, lower resolution, still in the range what we usually use in, in, in modeling about 1.8, 1.9 angstrom. And you see that the individual um, uh, resolution, so the individual quality of what you see from the ligand could be uh, quite different in the individual cases. Yeah, so, and this is the reason why this is important. So in this case, you have a high ADR value of 0.8 still, which is um, which shows you that um, the crystallographic uh, data really reflects the atomic positions, uh, except of a small portion here, which is uh, likely flexible. And here you see actually the a value of 0.5, which is already quite low. And you see that you don't have the atomic detail you usually want to see when you use the structures for um, for modeling. So in, in Proteins Plus, uh, this looks like follows. You can basically just um, uh, um, load a PDB structure and if there's an electron density available at the electron density uh, server, um, you can basically calculate these values. You can look at them here, uh, browse through it in 3D. Um, you can actually um, also switch on and off the color mode. You can actually change um, also the visibility of the um, uh, of the electron density. So you can switch on electron density and uh, then uh, get a picture like this um, to get an idea about yeah the 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 um, uh, the electron density behind the structure information. For us, this is such an important topic because we want to work towards a more or less automatic procedure so that we actually know which kind of protein structure information we can really use reliably also for modeling, but also for method uh, development tasks. Okay, so um, one of the oldest pieces of code um, in Proteins Plus is Docside. It's also one of the quite known works. So this is already quite highly cited. This work from Andrea Volkhammer. Um, and um, so Docside uh, was developed um, jointly with uh, Merck in Germany. It's a pocket identification method and it also uh, calculates druggability. Um, and you can uh, basically calculate a lot of pocket descriptors in here which are related to size and shape and what's a little bit special about um, the Docside approach is that Docside actually is able to separate the binding site into subpockets, which usually also reflects molecular entities like it is here so if you have a binding site with a cofactor for example you can see this usually also in the subpocket division which is quite quite useful. So with this descriptors, uh, we are running a machine learning approach and uh, this gives us um, prediction of druggability. Um, also, you can, we have make estimations of uh, enzyme functions and EC classification, but this is not part of the web server. Yeah. So um, to my knowledge, so Docsite is still the only web-based um, druggability um, service. Maybe they came something. If you know something, let me know. Um, uh, if there's something else available uh, yeah. than this. Yeah, and in, in Proteins Plus, this looks like follows. Um, here you see um, the, the protein structure, you can see the individual pockets which have been calculated. You can switch them on and off and you see the shapes of the pockets here in the, in the protein. And for each of them, you can, also, um, you can also get all the descriptors we are calculated and you have a, 
a drugability score, you have geometric criteria like volume and surface, um, and basically you can um, start and using this data. By the way, whatever you calculate with Proteins Plus can be downloaded. So if you want to basically have this in a table and just want to use this uh, with other tools, you can obviously do so. Um, um, recently, we, we added a functionality that you can actually work with your own pockets also in Proteins Plus, uh, which means that you can also design your own pockets. So you can actually um, take small molecules and create the pockets around them, and you can also edit them. So you can add amino acids, etc., or remove some if they don't fit actually to your to your purpose. And then you can also start calculations uh, with these um, individual pockets. Okay, so then um, another one, uh, which is one of our uh, really famous tools, which is PostView. Of course, we also um, put PostView into it. That's actually uh, even older than uh, than uh, than DocSide. Um, so um, PostView was developed by Katrin Stierand, and um, you see a picture here, and you probably have seen these pictures before. Um, for example, the PDB um, had uh, for quite some time uh, links to these kind of structure diagrams. Yeah, and um, so this is just a reminder that we have it in here. We also have some plans to work on this again, but uh, for now it is basically like um, the version um, you probably know from uh, the PDB. Um, so, um, several of the tools we developed uh, were developed with the aim that we are able to go from an input PDB structure to a protein uh, ligand docking input in a fully automated fashion. And uh, one aspect here is really to decide whether a structure is um, usable for validation tasks. Yeah, you probably have heard from data sets like Aztecs, um, where people spend a lot of time to really select structures which can be used for this method validation task. So, structure profiler is a completely automated way to do this. So we implemented most of the criteria which are used by, by Aztecs or the Iridium data set. Um, and we, we, we made it as close as we could get. Yeah, of course, it's always difficult to get exactly the same things because code is usually not um, uh, published with these methods. And um, so you can actually now look at it and you can say, does this um, protein structure fulfill the criteria which were used um, by the experts at Aztecs or, or OpenEye when they when they develop their actually filters um, for selecting uh, the, the structures. And with the EDIA, the EDIA I showed you um, just uh, at the beginning um, is one of the uh, very important tools here because it can automate uh, this process of looking at the quality of the electron density. Um, so let's let's look a little bit more into the field of um, working really with the structures, preparing them um, for um, for for example docking calculations. And one really important step here is that in case you have multiple structures, you have to, to align them correctly. And there are so many alignment tools available uh, for protein structures, but there are only a few um, which were able to align with a clear focus on the binding side. And this is something uh, which, which we have done um, uh, a few years ago, which is the tool Ascona. And here with these three pictures, you already see the problems which are usually occurring. Yeah? So you have um, uh, binding sites in the interface between protein structures. Uh, so here, which is not so easy to do if you have sequence-based alignment functionalities. You have um, homodimeric structures where the sequence alone doesn't give you the right orientation if you have structural differences here. Um, you have um, strong uh, geometric rearrangements close to the active site uh, where the structure-based methods usually um, uh, tend to fail. Yeah? So Ascona is a method to really handle all these cases in a fully automated fashion. So it's um, active site-based, it has a clear residue mapping as a result, it is able to handle interfaces between proteins, it creates multiple matchings if you have them, and it also matches flexible regions in the binding sites correctly. Yeah, and um, with this tool, without telling you how it works, again, um, please have a look at the paper. Uh, we are actually able to quickly align uh, binding sites on the fly while you are searching them. Yeah. 
Um, Ascona is a very important part of a pipeline we call Sienna. And um, Sienna um, uses uh, a special database technique to screen for active sites. It uses then this alignment technique I just mentioned. It has a superposition algorithm which superimposes uh, binding sites. And then it uh, has the hydrogen bond network optimization from Protoss I just mentioned and it has an ensemble reduction. So the, the whole workflow gives you from a single starting structure a ready to use alignment of multiple protein structures which can be used for structure-based virtual screening in an ensemble fashion, so including protein flexibility. So Sienna is available in Proteins Plus and you will be surprised how fast this actually is. So if you start with a single protein structure and you click on an active site and you basically say give me all protein structures with a similar active site, you get this result typical, typically in 20 to 30 seconds in a ready to use fashion. So all structures are aligned as you can basically see, see here in the picture. Um, you can interactively browse through them, you can um, highlight them, you can look at the overlay here, um, you can make a subselection, and this even works if you find hundreds of structures in the PDB uh, which um, give you an overlay for the individual structure you are looking at. Yeah? So this is re very, very useful if you start uh, with docking calculations because you immediately see the flexibility of the binding site. You can analyze it. You get information about mutations which exist with structural information, um, etc. Okay, so um, we have some analysis tools which were important to us and we think which are useful in the community. For example, we have a specific tool for analyzing metal ions in binding sites. So if you have metal ions, you always have the question, um, how well are they um, uh, represented in the structure? What are the, the, the correct, um, uh, the correct uh, geometries here the, uh, for, for the metal ions. And um, so what we do here is actually we, we look at the local geometry of this in the structure, um, use this to calculate the most likely coordination geometry. And we also give you a statistic uh, from the PDB, uh, which are the most favorite um, um, coordination geometries for this specific metal ion. Yeah, and this should help you to specify the interactions metals can actually uh, form in protein ligand complexes. Water placement is of course a big topic, so we have a tool named WARP which was developed by Eva Nittinger and I will not go into the details of the method again, but um, so WARP is quite reliable in predicting water positions and this is um, uh, validated on more than 20,000 water molecules uh, from PDB structures where we actually are able to predict 80% of them within a one point uh, angstrom RMSD. Yeah? And WARP is also available in Proteins Plus, so you can basically start it from, for your a binding site and uh, you will get uh, water molecules. You get them with oriented hydrogens as you can basically um, see it in here. And um, just um, to um, show you how you can work with this, you can actually click on individual waters, uh, inspect them in 3D, uh, look at the distance of the predicted to pro potential crystallographic water um, in here and actually use this uh, water network for your further analysis. All right, so now I want to come to a very new topic where most of the technology is not being published so far. So our aim was actually in the in the last year um, to really get a way to um, uh, make spatial arrangement searching, so geometric searching in the PDB possible. Yeah. So there are lots of questions which are related to geometry, like is this a reasonable geometry for a hydrogen bond or what is the typical distance between interacting atoms or is there a preferred residue for an interaction with a specific functional group or which functional groups can be found in similar protein environments and all these questions have a geometric um, flavor and um, all the methods we usually have uh, if you go to web-based services, are not able to answer these questions. 
So um, we started uh, to develop a technology for this um, now um, three, four, well, five years ago, and and this was Pelican, and Pelican was published uh, 2017, and this is basically what Pelican can do. So you can define arbitrary search points in uh, in the binding site. You can annotate them with properties like whether they belong to protein, to ligands. You can associate a smart expression with them. You can say which kind of element they are. You can add distances between them with tolerances to really describe, describe a, 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 an arrangement of these atoms. You can add angular informations and you can combine this, you can combine this with textual and numerical constraints uh, to get a three-dimensional query. Pelican is a database and the database uses a lot of our technology starting from um, the detection of the small molecules, um, the protos part for hydrogen assignment, all the interaction models we have um, to really come up and create a database with all these information. Yeah, uh, We store all atoms we have as individual search points in this database um, to make them searchable um, later on. The secret behind uh, Pelican is a, the, a very tailor-made index structure which will make these 3D searches quickly. Yeah, So we have also the interactions pre-calculated and stored um, to make these searches fast. Yeah? Just to give you an idea, this is already an old example from the paper. Um, if you're interested to find out more about um, the interaction of um, chlorine atoms um, which are um, uh, interacting with uh, with phenyl rings, uh, you can actually create an, a geometric query like this here, add a few distances. At that time, we searched about 60,000 PDB files, and this would take about 75 seconds to get all 230 matches from 190 PDB files, which, can, which contain this specific type of interaction. I just want to highlight that um, Pelican is an exact search engine. So it's not a heuristic. It's not that we find some of the hits in the PDB, we find exactly all hits uh, which are there. Yeah, um, And then you can use this, you can make distance histograms, um, angular histograms for the angles and, um, and probably create a model out of this. I will show you now what we have done since then. So Pelican was planned as a desktop application. So you have a Pelican database um, and a, and a Pelican tool and the Pelican graphical user interface, and all this is basically working in a desktop application. But our idea was actually to, to get it um, to a web-based application. So everybody in the world should be able to use it. So that will certainly not work because there's a, a big installation hurdle to get this actually running on your personal computer. So we we developed Geomine based on the Pelican tool, and this is how it looks like now. So we have the Proteins Plus website, the server, and behind the server we have now the Geomine tool, which is basically the old Pelican, and we have a specific Geomine database. So we had to change a lot to actually come to this point. Uh, we changed the database technology from SQLite to Postgres so that we have a real parallel working high performance database. Uh, we added additional interfaces here um, to have this uh, web-based technology available. The calculations uh, for Pelican uh, were done on such a machine. It was a six core machine, i5 processor, 16 gigabytes, and with a 500 gigabytes SSD RAM, which was then exclusively used for these calculations. Okay, and at that time, these were the results we get. Um, so here are a series of standard queries we usually ask yeah and without explaining all the details of these queries you see that we are in the range of minutes um, to seconds to answer these questions on this computer you've seen the change to postgres already helped to make it um, really um, uh, faster yeah so we already gained a lot of speed especially for the more um, uh, specific queries um, we already get uh, in the, into the time ranges of seconds to answer these questions. Now um, we also changed the computer, so we based and uh, we bought an exclusive database engine just for this task. And in the moment, so Geomine is running on this machine. So we have a 40 cores machine with uh, Xeon Gold processors. 
We have um, 30 cores exclusively for the database. Uh, we have um, about uh, 400 gigabytes of RAM, 200 gigabytes exclusively for the database. Um, and we have extremely fast um, uh, disks, uh, a series of disk systems, and we basically use one of them. So everything is SSD based in this, in this machinery um, to get uh, this web server running. And now I basically want to show you uh, what you can do with this. And for that, I basically picked um, a story, an example of what you can basically do. And with this, I will show you also the user interface, um, how you can actually work with this. So this is uh, the part where you basically create a query. Yeah. So here is the possibility to create a three-dimensional query. You can basically click on atoms here. They get a color code so you can see them here and you can specify the properties of these atoms. And in my specific case, uh, we uh, took a COX-2 inhibitor, Celecoxib, and we wanted to know whether there are other protein structures where this might fit in. So we were searching for off targets for this uh, specific uh, ligand molecule. And we thought um, it's uh, very um, reasonable that we have um, a very uh, a similar interaction pattern here. So um, we created this kind of query and, um, and I thought there might be um, the same kind of interactions for this head group here and this panel ring um, here, here below. Yeah? Okay, so we can we can uh, do this uh, with GeoMine, and uh, so the server needed about uh, 40 seconds to answer this question, and it uh, gives you about um, 170 matches in the PDB, uh, which come from um, um, 60 pockets with uh, from 43 PDB files. So in the meantime, we are already searching more than 350,000 pockets in the PDB. We can also search in the meantime pockets without ligands, um, empty ones, yeah, and uh, find um, patterns in there. And then you have the same thing as before. You can basically browse through them. You can look at them. You get an overlay of them and analyze them. And among the top hits, you find um, this um, pocket here of uh, acetazolamide in uh, carbonic anhydrase, anhydrase. Yeah, and in fact, um, this is uh, another structural picture of it. Um, this is a known, uh, it's a known fact. So this is a known um, off target. Um, we were able to detect with this kind of query. Yeah. Um, so um, we can also start, uh, start to search with this ligand here from the carbonic anhydrase. So we take acetazolamide now and uh, we use the query here. And the interesting thing is you don't have to really start with the query uh, you are creating from the PDB file. Um, so um, GeoMine is possible to work with hypothetical, hypothetical queries. You can basically say, um, is this something which looks, uh, which has a, uh, an aromatic kind of interaction here, which forms a hydrogen bond over here, something you probably haven't seen in the PDB file before. Yeah, you can combine this with some angular ranges here and um, fire this um, query. And basically this is um, what the query looks like. You can actually um, add additional filters like the resolution you want to limit. You probably want to have only high resolution structures. Um, and then look what comes out of it. Yeah, this query takes about 50 seconds to answer, and you get a lot of structures um, which uh, have this kind of pattern. And again, you can basically browse through them. Here are some examples um, we find with this uh, kind of query. Um, we find uh, uh, chitinase um, protein uh, complexes here in the overlay. And again, this is a very nice example because um, um, acetolamide is known actually um, to inhibit these uh, chitinase uh, as well. Yeah. So this was just, it's just one working scenario. And when we started with this work and we, we asked for funding for this kind of development, um, a reviewer comment was that this will be a really nice technology, but I simply don't know the questions I should ask. And this is probably one of the real challenges. This is, in my opinion, so powerful that you can do so many things with this um, that will be really interesting in the future how people will, will use this in practice. 
Um, yeah, just to mention, uh, we also have um, RESTful service of our server, and not all, but many of the uh, services we have um, have um, um, have uh, nine wrapper nodes. So basically, if you say you want to use some of these uh, functionalities, you can also import them into nine workflows the nine workflow will then contact our server uh, will do the job there and uh, will put the result back so it's not the, the fastest way to do things but it obviously gives you the chance to automate things um, easily yeah there are lots of things uh, we have in mind uh, which we want to do next so um, uh, we are working already for quite some time on a tool which is called Activity Finder. And with Activity Finder, we want to have a really reliable link um, to uh, the Campbell. So um, as, as often in our field, you think this is a simple problem. You compare the target, you compare the ligand molecule, the small molecule, and then you have the connection. And then once you start working on this, you notice how complex this actually are, especially the target side is really challenging because you really have to make sure that the binding site is the same, that you don't have specific mutations in there, that really the sequence is identical. So um, we spend now already um, a lot of work in really getting a reliable connection between these two. And we hope that this will be um, available um, then uh, in this year. So we also work on integrating inverse screening so that you actually can start with a small molecule and you can search through the entire PDB uh, for binding sites which might fa fit this um, uh, this protein, uh, the, the small molecule. So this is iRay, so we have the technology, um, uh, but uh, this is not integrated. Um, the same is true for pocket similarity. The problem with these two um, uh, tasks here is that they are quite work intense and uh, we have to make a um, a, a good connection to our um, high um, high performance computing infrastructure to really be able to answer these kind of questions on the web server. Uh, we will work more on interactions, which will take probably um, some more time. And one thing we also want to finish uh, soon is that you, we have a fully automated docking pipeline. So then you can start with an arbitrary PDB file. Uh, you can start with a SMILES representation of a small molecule, and we will present a docking solution for you. And um, we have lots of pieces uh, developed over the last decade. The last piece is uh, Jamda, which is a, a numerical optimizer for protein ligand complexes, which uh, is a stable um, optimizer. And this is something we are publishing right now. So maybe one of our reviewers is among the people who are listening here among you. Okay, um, structure-based screening would be the next step. Um, and also for Geomine, we have lots of plans and we would uh, like to extend this for um, to, so that it is able to also search protein-protein uh, interfaces, not only protein ligand interfaces. Okay, so um, I'm pretty much at the end of uh, my presentation. So um, um, here you see the names of my group. So this, this list here is really the current list of people. And as you can imagine, imagine this is not a current picture that, that wouldn't be allowed in Germany to do these pictures right now. Um, so, um, yeah, so a lot of people participated and uh, uh, put technology into this. Um, and um, yeah, I cannot just, I have to mention so many people here. So Katrin is actually um, heading the Proteins Plus um, uh, a project in my group. So she keeps really everything together and was responsible for the server. Um, and um, then uh, many other contributed um, to this to this work from my from my group. Yeah. So currently the Geomine development maybe this is really ongoing. Just to mention this, um, this is done by by Joel and uh, Conrad and um, um, and also um, uh, Martin um, uh, participated in here. Okay. So um, all the Proteins Plus work is funded by the German Ministry um, of Research. Um, so we are really happy to get uh, money to do this uh, kind of work. And with this, uh, just to mention that we also have another server on uh, online, which is called Smarts Plus. And this is uh, the complete other direction of the research we are doing um, in Hamburg. So this is completely chem informatics. And if you are interested in 
creating smart patterns, uh, searching them, comparing smart patterns. Um, this is also all available on the web and uh, you can basically uh, use it here yeah and um, so this is a brand new thing and um, if you are um, yeah you have probably have to wait about two weeks and then um, there will be the online version of uh, the summer school of camo informatics which usually takes place in Strasbourg and I'm really happy that my Strasbourg uh, colleagues uh, Alexandre Warneck and, and others made this um, uh, an, an online event and you will find there a presentation uh, from me about Smarts Plus so if you're interested in it that will be the great entry point for you uh, to really get an overview basically like this talk here which shows all the technology with it, which is available behind this server so uh, in about two weeks or so all right so um these are the most important links um for you so um proteins plus smarts plus are the two web servers i mentioned um lots of our tools are also available if you want to run it um, um, offline on your site then you have to install them and run it and this is available for um, uh, for everybody um, it's entirely free for academics you can or can have to go to the site and then you can download it you have to be sure uh, and and aware that we are of course not a software company and not a not possible it's not possible for us to really give you a lot of support we do our best but that's, that's something you should know if you want it more professional you i think know where you have to go so of course we work a lot together with biosolf it many of our components were either developed together or were licensed also to biosolf it so that you can get them from them and then i'm pretty sure you also get a great support and yeah that that's it from my side i hope it was informative and um uh, it was something in there which is useful for your daily work we are happy uh, for feedback related to the service we are happy for users um, please uh, if you are in academia tell it to the students and let them work with it because the one last secret i can tell you so my funding for these things depend on the number of clicks so you can really give me a favor and use these things okay so thank you very much for listening